like to thank the Prince very much and uh, just to say that um, because I have 20 minutes um, which is what I was told <coughs> I'm going to talk to the issues you know uh, since 1994 our government has been creating policies around the issues of service delivery. And in most cases, these policies have, uh, there has always been a sentence or two about Ubuntu. Sometimes saying in the case of Batukede, it must be the people first. And sometimes saying we must build in Ubuntu into our service delivery mechanisms. And then we've given names um, to all these policies. Uh, there was a RDP, Reconstruction and Development Program, which came with a ban. Everybody remembers when it came, very few people will remember how it disappeared but then it disappeared. There were very, very strong talks around RTP that uh, now is the time for Ubuntu. And I must say, even before 1994, there was in this province a, a government of the Kwazulu homeland. It was teaching something called Ubuntu Mutu in the schools uh, formally. But of course, those were political programs, party political programs promoting a certain point of view. And then of course, in, in the later years, after the RDP then came Masakane, let us build each other, and in cities like Jopek, there's one or two informal settlements which are called Masakana. There was a very strong talk of Ubuntu. And then the most popular Batupili campaign was also about Ubuntu. And I'm not going to talk about the details of, the, of all of those, but this paper is presented in the context of the South African government's seemingly tireless dedication towards upholding Ubuntu principles in service delivery. An effort which, however, due to lack of sustainability strategies, does not seem to reach its expected maturity. It's there and everybody talks about it. But does it happen? And the objective of this paper is to contest, contest the these kinds of mentions and efforts and to propose that in the case of service delivery by the South African government and its agents, it is the absence of community to state knowledge transfer. Community to state knowledge transfer would be a situation where the service delivery agents spend their time understanding the social framework of the people for whom they intend delivering the services. How do people on a day-to-day -day basis, for example, deliver services to each other? And can we make use of that familiar way of giving and taking services and build that into the state mechanisms of service delivery. One issue that comes, a councillor walks into a place and he says, I'm going to build your houses. And there's a revolt. There's a revolt because people suddenly have realized that the councillor cannot, on his own, deliver houses. That is in municipality A. In another municipality, the officials walk in there, they read a long list of the things that the municipality has decided to do 
for the community in order for the lives of the people in the community to be better. And the officials are calling it consultation. And when you sit through some of these meetings, you know that consultation is more of informing. And then he goes away back to the municipal offices and he writes down that he has been to the community and he has consulted. And sometimes they even deliver the service. A community hall, after a year or two, it lies dilapidated. Nobody's interested in it. A sports field is there and the people just play next to it. <laughs> So we've looked at what political leaders have said, uh, from Mandela to Begi to Zuma, as well as, of course, the Premier of this province. Last year he was in this conference and his view was that Ubuntu can be used to leverage sustainable growth and development in the province. And of course, all the time that we, we, we get these kinds of issues, we then say, how is that going to happen? And there's a lot of academic writing that has been done on this subject. Uh, the most familiar, Samkange, McAllister, Segalo, and around Bishop to do those analyses and thesis being written, and the whole issue of social um, identity theory being put forward. But in this case, <clears throat> what I want to put forward is a situation where in almost every village, every household here in Kwazulu Natal, there is always sometimes a, a time which is called Iskati, so it wins it, Umsebez. Umsebez. Now, this is a <clears throat> a ritual service is a service which you do for the ancestral collective as well as for the members of the homestead so that there can be harmony between these elements of existence. What happens in the case of a ritual service is that uh, somebody will say identify a need for a certain ritual to be performed and that ritual must involve the slaughtering of a cow. And then somebody sometimes is a person who works and has got money and will therefore has the means to go and buy the cow as well as the goat. But the ritual umsebe itself may not necessarily be directed 